G'day mates. Well, you may not always make your own fish stock, but by jingo, if you do, it has to be Bonza. So here's Chef Walter and his ripper recipe. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. If this is your first time tuning in, let us know you're out there by giving us a big thumbs up below and then hit that subscribe button to make sure you never miss a video. Now, let's start cooking. And so we're gonna be using all of this fish. We're gonna be using all the bones and we're gonna use the head. The one thing we don't really want in the head is the eyes and so that's what we use the peeler for is to, just to remove the eyes. And then you always want to, uh, when you're making a stock, for a fish stock, you want your pieces to be fairly small. So you can either do, you can either, you know, cut those pieces with your kitchen scissors or you can use your cleaver to do that. So those are the pieces of our equipment. Let's get started. We have made our fillets. We have, um, you know, our, our fish is cleaned. I've gone ahead and removed the eyes just to spare you that small detail. And now what we're gonna do is we're just going to chop the fish up so that we can use it for our, our um, fish stock. And by the way, if you're using a cleaver like this in your, in your kitchen, this is the area of the, of the cleaver that you use. You never, you don't do this, you don't do this, you use this area here. That's where it's the most efficient. So that is the, the best way to, to use your cleaver in the kitchen. And so this is gonna be our, what we'll use for our stock. And all these pieces will then go into a, a bowl. And again, we're using the, we're gonna use the head. And again, we could, you could use, certainly do this with your scissors. You could take your, your kitchen shears and come along like that and do that. Same thing. In fact, it might even be easier with the, with the scissors to do that. And you just have to be careful if there's anybody in, you know, near you. The camera woman the camera woman, not to get fish spray on them. And also when you're doing this, make sure that your hand is out of the way when you're cutting through. There we go. And the smaller the pieces, the more flavor is gonna be extracted out of the fish. So what we're gonna do with these pieces now is you, you can't just put them in the pan and start cooking them. You need to rinse them very thoroughly um, so that any blood or anything else is removed. So that's what we'll do is get it all uh, rinsed. Okay, once you've got our, everything cut, you want to use the very coldest water that you can get and just, I like to just set my, my bowl under some running water and just let that water run for probably a good five minutes until, until it runs clear. And uh, you, can even, you can even put ice. In fact, it helps to put ice in here because what that does is help coagulate uh, the blood and the solids and that kind of stuff. And then they will, they will uh, be able, you'll be able to wash them out. So, We'll let that go and we'll make sure we get our water clear and our fish is all clean. So a good question is why would you want to spend the time and the effort to make your own fish stock? Well, first of all, it's not hard at all. And secondly, you know what's in it. Fish stock is not something that lasts a long time. So if you find fish stock or seafood stock on a shelf, that means it has lots of preservatives in it and maybe other stuff that you can't pronounce. So for me, I like making my own. Now, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. If I'm in the States, if I'm in the Northeast, uh, somewhere that I know that, um, or the Northwest, that I know that I'm going to get a fresh fish stock, certainly I'll be I'm happy to buy it. But if you are you know, a week away from home and you're in a fishing area and you go and you buy fresh fish, it's just as easy to make your own fish stock. So 
those are the main reasons for that and um, it also is very very good so let's look at our ingredients for our fish stock so we just finished filleting the fish and we've prepared it for we we're using the carcass the bones and the head and all that kind of stuff for the stock so that's what's in here and i've i've rinsed it and now it's just draining and now the other elements for our stock is very simple. Uh, we've got some butter that we're going to melt in our in our in our saucepan. Then we're going to um, sweat some onions, some celery, and some fennel. And then our uh, aromatics are going to be just some fresh parsley and a bay leaf. And that's literally it. So we'll start that process. And I'm just going to heat up heat up my my skillet with my uh, with my butter. So we've got our butter melting and we're going to put our uh, aromatics in here in, in just a second. But then what we'll do is we'll deglaze the pan with, uh, and, and I'm using a Noily Pratt. This is a, a, it's basically a vermouth. It's a very good vermouth. And, you know, I'm not a martini lover, but uh, apparently if you like martinis, this is fantastic for martinis. But it's a dry vermouth made in the south of France and it's absolutely delicious. And so we'll deglaze our pan with, with this, and it's really just a splash. Uh, we're probably no, talking no more than 50 to 75 milliliters um, of, of this New Orleans Pratt, maybe a quarter, quarter of a cup. And then we'll fill it up with, with some water, and that'll be our process. So to get started, we'll add our onions into our pan and our celery and our fennel and we're just using the the white aromatics we're not using any carrot or anything like that uh, because again it's a fish stock and um, you know one of the other uses that you would have you know one of the some of the uses that you might have for fish stock is for you know fish soup um, and for different sauces so those are the reasons that I usually use my, my fish stock. And it is just a lot of fun to make. And you are contributing uh, to the environment by using up all of that fish. And just it's part of the, the zero waste plan. So we want to get, just get these vegetables nice and sweated. And that is until they are soft and translucent. We'll add just a pinch of salt in there to help some of that, that moisture release. And once that's nice and soft, we'll, we will then add our fish. Now the idea for doing this is you don't want to, uh, you really don't want to color your, your onions or your vegetables any, but I'll let this go a little bit longer than I needed to, but it will be just fine. So once those get nice and soft, it is now, Time to add our fish. So we'll just add those in. And we will let this go until the fish turns white. So just cook and stir until the fish pretty much turns white. And at that point, you can deglaze it with your... And you can use, instead of... Uh, you, you don't have to use vermouth in this. You can use just a white wine, a dry white wine. Works just great. And this really just deglazes the pan and you're just going to let that cook until the alcohol is cooked out of it. Pretty much when it, it gets very syrupy down in the, in the bottom of the pan, you're just cooking the alcohol out of it and a lot of the moisture. And it just imparts just great flavor. So once that, uh, the alcohol is cooked out, oh, it really smells, it really smells divine. It's, it smells so good. Just very, uh, like seafood. Mm -hmm. Very nice. All right. Now we can go back in with our water and we're just going to cover this. And for what I've done here, I've, I've added a, a liter of water. I could probably add a little bit more. We have quite a few um, um, aromatics or quite a few vegetables. And now we've added our, our water 
and we'll add our parsley. All of this will get, of course, strained out. So add that back in. And we're gonna bring this up to a vigorous simmer. You don't want to boil it because you want this stock to remain clear. So, or at least translucent. So we're gonna bring this up to a nice uh, vigorous simmer and then we'll turn it down to a low simmer and let it go for 20, 25 minutes and strain it out and it's done. Okay, we have now come up to a slight boil, uh, more of a, a vigorous simmer. And you can see the, the white that has come up on the top of this. I'm going to actually switch this burner because we don't want it to, uh, to get too, to, to burn too high. So we want to keep the temperature down and just to cook gently. And we can now skim the foam. That's all we're doing. We're skimming the foam and then we've turned the heat down and we're gonna let it go for 20 to 25 minutes. And if we need to come back and skim it, you know, a couple more times before it's all finished, we can certainly do that. But that is literally, the hard part's done. As if there was any hard part at all. Okay, now that we've got it nice and skimmed, we're gonna, we've turned the heat way down and we're just gonna let it simmer for about 20 to 25 minutes. And you can taste it and see um, if it's got the strength that you want. And of course, you know, the longer you cook it, the more flavor it's gonna have. But uh, with a fish stock, you don't need to cook it for a couple hours, you know, like you would do a, a chicken stock or even a beef stock. And uh, that's gonna be good. So when that's, after about 20 to 25 minutes, we'll come back and we'll strain it out. It's been about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And now let's just take a, let's take just a little sip here. Oh, it's very intense, nice intense fish flavor. Of course it's not seasoned, um, but wow. It's gonna be a great base for a sauce. It's gonna be a great base for some, for some soup. So uh, that is our stock, it's finished. So now we will just literally strain it. And it's always best to use a, a nice big strainer for something like this. Let's turn our heat off. And we will just get all of that goodness out of the solids. And at this point, we can just take our ladle push down on everything and that is it and all we need to do now is just let it cool and it can be stored or you can use whatever you need for your sauce or your stock if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more give us a thumbs up below and hit that subscribe button it's free and ring the bell if you want to be notified as soon as we release a new video also, let us know in the comments if you have any special recipe requests. We really appreciate you tuning in. See you next time.